that's on Wall fine. Street. But I'm asking you about the wealthy and how much higher you would make it. You said yeah, you, I, you I don't agree with 70 percent. What would your number be? In the campaign in 2016, we talked about 52 percent. All right, so 52 percent. So would yeah. you be willing to pay 52 percent on the money that you made? Oh, so you can volunteer. You can send a check. Oh, you can volunteer too. We have a. But you suggested. You suggested that uh, that's hey, what everybody in your bracket should do. And Martha, why don't you give? You make more money than I well, do. Why I don't you I give? I didn't suggest a wealth tax. And she's not running for president. Oh, a wealth tax, is it? Or, as Elizabeth Warren puts it, a two cent tax. You gotta pitch in two cents. A two cent wealth tax. <laughs> All I'm asking for is a little slice from the tippy, tippy top. Sigh, been there, done that. You recall the former president of France, Francois Hollande, who initiated a wealth tax for those at the very tippy, tippy top? And the French government wants the rich to help pay more to help the sagging economy, so it has now passed a millionaire tax. Well, the France president, uh, French's president rather, introduced this idea plans to sign it into law. And after they passed the tax, it was so excessive, a French court made them amend it. With the top French court having thrown out a proposed super tax on the rich, the Paris government is looking at how it can be changed. The law has to be redrafted in response to the Constitutional Council's ruling that a 75% tax rate for those earning more than 1 million euros per year was unfair. Reportedly, an amended tax will be introduced at the latest in next year's budget. Well, what happened? Well, the first thing to understand is that this wealth tax is a tax on net worth every single year. That would be an annual tax of 2% on wealth over $50 million or two cents of every dollar. Now in practice, this plan is much more complicated and costly. It would raise over $200 billion a year, according to our economists. Taxpayers would have to estimate the current value of everything from cars and real estate to art and private companies. And yes, most European countries have abandoned wealth taxes because they raised less than expected revenue. And it was extremely difficult to administer. The paperwork involved for ministers, imagine in France, you've already got so much to do. And here's another one for them. Uh, there you can actually see the form they're filling out. Now that includes things like, what is the value of your first and second home? But also, what about the art objects inside them? And even the bric-a-brac, I kind of did a oh, double gosh. take on that. <laughs> Every single thing. Um, where did you buy them? How much are they worth? That's the same for cars as well. So what happened? Sit down. This tax is an exception. I want to remind you or give you a scoop. It will no longer exist after January the 1st, 2015. In 2013, the tax generated 300 million euros. That's only 0.5 percent of France's overall income taxes. The French government said 470 businesses were meant to pay it, as well as about 1,000 people earning more than 1 million. Artists and football clubs hope to be exempted. Some threatened to strike if they were forced to chip in. Last year, French football clubs lost about 40 million euros. This year, their results will be in the red again. One reason for that is the 75% tax. You mean the rich didn't roll over and just play dead after the passage of the wealth tax? After the super tax was announced, the government was accused of shooting itself in the foot by risking an exodus of high-profile personalities. Business leaders expressed fears that investors would pull out of France. France's richest man, Bernard Arnault, took out Belgian nationality, and actor Gerard Depardieu also moved across the border to Belgium before obtaining Russian citizenship. High-earning French footballers threatened strike action, while league bosses warned they would no longer be able to attract world-class players. End of quote. Worse, as mentioned, the tax did not produce the anticipated Revenue. Finance ministry studies show that despite all the publicity, the sums obtained from the super tax were meager, standing at 260 million euros in 2013, which is around $289 million, and 160 million euros 
in 2014, which is about $178 million, and affecting 1,000 staff in 470 companies. Over the same period, the budget deficit soared to 84.7 billion euros. That's around $93 billion, end of quote. And the wealth tax hasn't fared much better in other European countries that tried and ended the wealth tax. Wealth tax supporters do not seem concerned about the likely damage to economic growth, but they should know that from a practical standpoint, wealth taxes in other countries have raised little money and have been a beast to administer. More than a dozen European countries have used wealth taxes, but nearly all of these countries repealed them, including Austria, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, and Sweden. Wealth taxes survive only in Norway, Spain, and Switzerland." End of quote. Now, can we take a peek at the lifestyle of some of these rich socialists? Let's take Francois Hollande, who on television made it clear how he felt about those who live at the very tippy, tippy, tippy top. Uh, and this goes yeah. back to a moment in, um, in Hollande's political career when he said on TV, I dislike the rich. But does Mr. Hollande dislike the rich lifestyle? Becky, there's something of a scandal brewing I'm hearing as well at the Elysee Palace. Tell us more. Well, yeah, perhaps a little bit of fun, perhaps not. Uh, this is uh, what is being tagged Coiffure Gate. Uh, the Elise spokesman has uh, confirmed to us the existence of a hairdresser paid almost 10,000 euros or over $10,000 a month by the public purse. Uh, fear not, though, it seems the president's staff can justify the salary uh, incorporated, as it is, we are told, into their operating costs. So confirming once again, this hairdresser has a salary of, uh, I think it's something like $10,991.71, if you were... Uh, <laughs> doing the uh, exchange rate today on the euro. Uh, and listen, what the Elise Palace tell us is that the, uh, the president is out and about a lot and, quite frankly, needs to look the part. Hey, hey, a socialist has to look good, right? Now, in addition to Mr. Hollande's $15,000 a month pension, let's take a look at some of his other assets, shall we? As well as the spacious Paris apartment he shares with his lover, Alon owns a palatial villa in the prestigious hilltop Cannes suburb where the artist Pablo Picasso used to live. It is valued by the official journal at 800,000 euros, which is 882,000 US, and is a short drive from Alon's two flats in the Cannes. They are each prized at about 230,000 euros, or 253,000 US, and 140,000 euros, or 154,000 US, end of quote. Just what is it with socialists and three homes? Socialism. What a wonderful country we have. The best known socialist in the country happens to be a millionaire with three houses. What did I miss here? Vermont newspapers reported the senator had dropped just under $600,000 for a third home. Some Twitter users said based on his campaign platform and political values of democratic socialism, it was a hypocritical move. Then the headlines started rolling in. Which brings us to Bernie Sanders' most formidable surrogate, Michael, I'm not in the top 1% more, net worth $50 million. I, I need you to admit the bleeding obvious. I need you to sit here and say, I'm in the 1%. Because it's important. Well, I can't. Because I'm not. of your argument. You are, then. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not in the 1%? I'm, of course I'm not. How can I be in the 1%? So this $2 million home on Torch Lake is owned by filmmaker Michael Moore and his wife of 22 years, Kathleen Glynn. The new court documents reveal Moore and his now ex-wife shared properties in Michigan and New York. The Detroit News reports the couple owned nine total. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but hey, money is overrated, right? Money isn't all, you know, Jim. <laughs> Not when you got it. <clears throat> or as writer Somerset Mom put it, money is a sixth sense without which full use of the other five is not possible, especially if you want to buy three <laughs> homes. I'm Larry Elder, and we've got a country to save. I'll see you next time.